Three beer Thursday coming up for you, and this is looking at Corbo Brewery based in Toyama. Now, just a little bit of history about Corbo Brewery. It's actually started by, I apologize if I pronounce his name incorrectly, Giri Kochinyek. Again, apologies, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, he actually started out at Nihonkai up in Ishikawa, and he has won a lot of awards for his beers. Nihonkai have been well known for producing some excellent pilsners, dark beers, and for me, actually one of my favourite styles of beer, Schwarz beers. Um, I've had some fabulous ones from Nihonkai. So when I have heard that Cobra Brewery had a special set on, I, I jumped at the chance. And we've got three of the beers today. The first one is the 3A Lager. Next up is the pale ale and then finally I'm leaving it till last because I've heard it's amazing the Premnant Pilsner I'm gonna start off with the 3A Lager pale ale which I'm a little nervous about I'm a bit wary so far of how can I say this nicely non-american pale ales being quite buttery i guess but this is what i'm really looking forward to so without much further ado let's drink i'm gonna crack open this cobo 3a lager as you can see it's quite a large bottle half liter bottle right and an interesting thing about this beer we can't see it on the back, but it actually tells you the IBU. As you can see there, it's about 35. I think it's 38 in the end. Yeah, 38. I know it's nice to have that on a label. It doesn't tell you what hops there are. Ooh. But it is a Czech style lager, so I'm guessing it uses imported SARS hops. And straight away, as you can see the color beautiful I know lots of head on there but hey it's my beer I'm pouring it slightly cloudy but I mean that could just be because I've taken the beer out of the fridge so there's a slight condensation on the side of the glass nice fluffy white head going on there does look pretty good doesn't it so first of all definitely a noble hop aroma a bit too much head i might have to drink a bit more but it is a little bit sweet it does have that pilsner bite to it it's slightly definitely sars in there it has that sars kind of floral like aroma to it straightforward really it's a it smells like a, a pilsner it's crisp dry and it's only five percent I say only because for me being Brit that's kind of export strength but yeah it's pretty damn good I mean if you compare it to most craft lagers most of them tend to have kind of a buttery diacetyl flavor to it but that is that's smooth, very well made. I'd say the only disadvantage to it is perhaps the price. You know, I mean, you are getting a half litre bottle here, which is, you know, probably about 700 yen, I'd say. And you compare that to, say, a can of well made macro, like I'm going to say, Epis, because that is a well made. That's about three, 300 yen for the same size. So you are paying almost over double the price but this is really nice and definitely definitely if you can find it I'd say try it it's actually a surprisingly good craft lager 
you know, it's, it's what you expect. I'm going to finish this and take my time. And I think the pale ale is uh, going to be interesting. And that's up next. Here we have the Cobalt Brewery Pale Ale. Like the lager, as you can see, it's got information on the back. This one's got an IBU of 45. Now, I know for a fact that this one is brewed using Amarillo hops, which kind of is quite strange. Amarillo being an American hop. Um, I was, when I first heard that, I was a bit like, oh, why not go for like a some Czech hops perhaps, I know it's kind of really weird for me to say that, but the first thing you, you notice is it's not very lively compared to the lager. It's a bit darker, it's probably, I'm guessing it's not really an American pale ale, it's probably more a, an English pale ale with that colour. Um, bit of chill haze on the front. I'm guessing there's perhaps some Maris Otter in there, but it is very amarilly. It's, uh, you know, it's not very lively. Kind of, in the light, as you can see, quite a golden colour, but a bit buttery, which kind of leads me to believe it's supposed to be an English pale ale. If it is supposed to be an English pale ale, the butteriness is okay. If it's American, then butteriness is a big no. You don't want it in there. Um, it's quite soft. I don't know if that's a, a suitable way to ex explain a pale ale, but the the hop twang is is quite soft. The water, I guess, is uh, perhaps not been treated. It's not bitter in the slightest. Oh no, nope, tell totally. There's a slight bitterness as you let it warm up in your mouth. It's just a bit peculiar, eh? I've I've yet to have. A pale ale in Japan from a Czech brewer that I've enjoyed. I'm not saying they can't make them. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the ones that I've had haven't been very good. This isn't amazing. It's not going to win awards. It's not terrible. I mean, believe me, there's far worse brewers out there making a pale ale and you know who you are. Stop it. Um, but part of me thinks it should have been tested before bottling or at least on the back there have some explanation this is an American parallel this is an English parallel explain it to the drinkers so they know because if you go into this expecting an American parallel which in all fairness when you look at the ones we have in Japan you've got Sierra Nevada parallel which has pretty much been the stalwart standard for pale ales if you drink that and then come drink this you are going to be disappointed like i said it's not a bad effort it's not something i would buy again it's not something i would choose to drink again mainly because i've had better pale ales in japan so so far i'm gonna to have to say meh on this i'll finish it off it's no, it's by no way a drain pour but it just no, it doesn't do it for me. Sorry. So this is the one I'm looking forward to. It's the Premnant Pilsner. The reason I'm looking forward to it is because when Jiddy worked at Nihonkai, he made one of the best Pilsners I've had in Japan, perhaps outside of Germany. And whenever I saw it on the menu, I'd buy it. So when he started up his own brewery at Koba, and I heard he was making a pills now, I was like, yes, excited. Um, like the rest of the beers in the video, on the back, as you can see, it's got the information. This has got an IBU of 38, which in the previous part of the pale ale, doesn't seem that much lower, really, in difference. It's only seven units difference, which I can't really tell the difference of. Um, this is brewed to a traditional Czech Pilsner recipe and straight away as you can see from the colour it is a, a very light 
straw color. Um, very, very clear, very little cloudiness to it. That's probably uh, slightly due to the, the glass being just washed off beforehand. The head, pretty minimal. It's white and fluffy, but oh, it smells good. It smells a little bit floral, a bit of noble hop. Obviously some Pilsner notes going on. Um, oh, slight kind of fruity butteriness going on to style. That is just damn good. It is everything you could possibly want in a Pilsner. It, like the rest of the beers in this video, it's not cheap. It's about 700 in a bottle, half a litre again. But I'd happily pay that for this. If somebody working in a craft beer brewery, a small brewery, can do something like this, why can't the big companies do something like this? This is just... Amazing. And that could be because I had the pale ale previously, and that was disappointing, but there. Wow, that's damn good. Cheers. I am, I'm glad I bought another one of these because I want another one. I would happily drink this all day, which I'm gonna do. So time for the roundup. Um, we had three beers. We had the three lager, the pale ale, and uh, the permanent pilsner. I'm gonna go again, like I did in the DD4D, go for my least favorite to my most. And I think it's pretty obvious, really, that the pale ale I had, I didn't really enjoy it. I'm sorry, it just didn't do it for me at all. I would like to think that it's gonna change recipe it's gonna become either English or American, but it just doesn't do it for me. The next one I would say would be the 3A Lager. It is, comparing these two, it's like night and day. I mean, this was, you know, this was damn good. And perhaps if I'd gone with the pale ale first, and then this, my thoughts might be, might be different, but I highly doubt it just because it's a good, well-made lager. And if you hadn't a guest, the Premnant Pilsner, that, in my opinion, is the best beer they do. And if you can get it, buy it, drink it, and make sure you bought a couple more. Like I said, it's, it is pretty pricey for what it is, but it's damn good. And hopefully in the future, the price will come down a little bit. But it's everything you want in a Pilsner. And I have to, off my hat, incredibly well made, incredibly well made. Thank you for joining me in this Three Beer Thursday with Cobble Brewery. Thank you to the patrons for your support as well. And I will see you next time on Three Beer Thursday. Bye.